Welcome to the St. Joseph Radio Presents live program broadcasting to you from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. The program that for over 30 years has brought you eloquent speakers from across the globe to help explain, clarify, and evangelize the Catholic faith. Our program covers a variety of topics relating to current issues and occurrences in our daily lives. Now, with the aid of technology, we are able to bring the gospel message to the four corners of the world, where Christ himself did say, those who have ears ought to hear. It is our hope at St. Joseph Radio that through these programs, we can help evangelize the world and change one soul at a time. Now, here is your host to introduce today's guest and topic. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of St. Joseph Radio Presents. Uh, I'm your host today. My name is Ray Girard. And uh, with me in studio today is Kathy Fork. She is the campaign director for 40 Days for Life down in Columbia, Missouri. Kathy, welcome to our program. Thank you. And thank you so much, Ray, for having me. Oh, well, thank you for being here. Um, and um, so we're going to be talking about uh, 40 Days for Life and all the good work that they do. Um, but before we do, uh, as we uh, begin every program, we need to begin by giving an acknowledgement to uh, the one who makes all of us and everything in our lives possible. Uh, so we open with a little prayer, and Kathy has graciously consented to lead us, uh, lead us in that. So if you would, please. Thank you. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, amen. Heavenly Father, thank you for this beautiful day. Thank you for this beautiful opportunity to share about the wonderful works of 40 Days for Life and how babies are being saved, moms are being saved, and how the world is being touched by such a simple thing as 40 Days for Life, praying and fasting, and loving you and being you on the sidewalks all across America and different countries in the world. Holy Spirit, please be with us today as we talk about these these beautiful things and, and this issue that that is so so tearing our world apart, abortion, losing babies, babies that you have deigned to live in this world. And dear Lord, please please be with us as we struggle to understand this this atrocity. And as we struggle to find our way and what we should do to end this, this holocaust of your most precious babies in America and in the world. And we ask this in your most holy name, dear Jesus, with the powerful intercession of your most blessed mother, Mary. Amen. 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 Father, Father, Son, Holy, holy Spirit. Spirit. Amen. Amen. Well, that was a prayer right from the heart. That was beautiful. That was beautiful. Thank you for that. It's the Holy Spirit. I don't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> you know, as, uh, as you were praying, what I was thinking of, uh, it's just of the, the faith of the people in your group, the faith of people like you. I mean, the people you work with. I mean, you're all people of strong faith. Yes? Yes, that is true. That is true. Um, you know, it, it's like the Holy Spirit gives you the grace to say Jesus is Lord. And I think that the Holy Spirit gives you the grace to stand on a sidewalk in um, front of a place where babies are being aborted or a place where women are being sent to other places so that, that their child would lose their life. And it's a particular grace that I don't think everyone has, but I know that God has um, gifts for all of us to do and for many, it is standing in front of a sidewalk. So if you ever thought, oh, I wonder if that's something God wants me to do, I kind of think he does. I would imagine, I would imagine so. He would, he would want all of us in some way or another to make our voices known that, you know, that his will is important when he decides, you know, to bring a life into this world. I mean... You know, if we decide otherwise, I mean, you know, that's obviously not, that's the opposite of humility. I mean, we're playing the role of God at that point. Mm -hmm. um, but um, 
just to get back to this, uh, you know, I mean, all of the people that, well, as you're just saying now, this is not necessarily such an easy thing to be standing on a sidewalk. And so the people that do this sort of thing, I mean, you've all got to have such a strong faith. There's obviously, the, you know, that's, that's the prime motivation why you're doing this. I mean, tell me a little bit about, I mean, I don't know, some of the people that, that, that you work with. I mean, I don't, we don't need names or anything, but, you know, I mean, just uh, the, the faith, it must, be, it must be rewarding to be around people with, with you know, such faith like that. Well, as, as my dear friend Judy Back says, you meet the most wonderful people on the sidewalk. And I just remember back in 2009 when my husband and I first started going there, it was because of a prompting that I had. I had uh, married my husband and moved out here from Arizona, and I was thinking like, wow, God, you must have something for me to do. What is it? You know, I'm praying. And I thought maybe he wanted me to have, um, to start Eucharistic adoration at our parish there, St. Andrews in Holt Summit. And abortion came to mind. And I'm like, abortion? And so, you know, I pondered that. And when Mike came home from work, I said, do they have any abortion facilities around here? And he said, yeah, in Columbia. I said, can you show me? And so he took me there, and I, I looked at this ugly building, and I, I just could sense, you know, the death that was happening in there because at that time they were aborting about 800 babies every year in that building. So and, you're talking like two a day? Um, about 15 to 20 a week. They only yeah. they did them one day a week, and so I just did a little research. I um, called up and found out what day they did them on, what time, and then I actually even went inside there uh, just to see it. And the heartbreak in there was astounding. How'd you manage to get in? Well, at that time I wasn't an activist. Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, anybody can go into a Planned Parenthood. Mm-hmm. So I gathered up my courage and walked in there and just sat down and just observed what was going on. And in that, it, I remember I left right at the hour of mercy, 3 o'clock. Um, so I was in there about an hour, and I just, you know, they asked me what I wanted, and I said, I'm waiting for someone. I was. I was waiting for Jesus to tell me what to do. And I, I just remember this one girl came in, and she was from the college. She had on um, high heel boots and, you know, was just dressed really nicely. You could tell she had money in her boots. You know, they clap, clap, clap on the, on the floor. And she went up there, and she said, I need the morning after pill. And then I go, oh, $25. And I'm just like, oh, my goodness. And then another lady came in from a, a um, she had on her uniform from a local restaurant, and she said, I need a pregnancy test. And so they said, uh, okay, that'll be, I think it was $20. And so she took her money out of her, her pocket and started counting out these dollars, and it was her tip money. Mm-hmm. And I'm just thinking, like, oh, these people gave tips, and they didn't know that it was going for this, you know, to Planned Parenthood. And then after a while, she did come out, and her positive, her test was positive. And it was just about that time they'd asked me again, is your person coming yet? You know, they're like, can we help you? You know, you could tell they, they wanted me out of there. I look, I'm sure I look very out of place. And um, so I laughed, and as I walked out, the, the girl and her friend came out, the one who had the positive pregnancy test, and I just said, oh, I think I heard him say that that your test was positive. I said, that's wonderful. She goes, yeah, that's wonderful. And I said, well, aren't you happy? And she said, yeah, I'm real happy. And I'm just like, what can I do? What can I do? I had no information to give her. And right across the street was a pregnancy center, but I didn't know. And so I just asked God, you know, what do you want me to do? And so then I... I started coming on the days that they started doing abortions, and I would just walk up and down. And then another, I met this other um, 
woman and her son. And so then they started coming to pray with me too. And then Mike would come after he got off of work at 3.30. But I remember this one particular day, um, my friend Joanne, she had come and she usually came like about noon and stayed till about one. And Mike didn't get there till 3.30. So, you know, I was there that time. And uh, it was about five o'clock. And I take it back, it was four o'clock. And Mike said, well, do you think we should go? And I said, well, I don't know, because there were still women that were inside. And we were just praying. That's all we were doing is praying. And then all of a sudden, here came a group of uh, students from a zoo with an, with an older counselor, and they were bound for life. And they had the little red tape on their lips that said life. And so they said, you know, they said, oh, we're so glad to see you. Um, are you leaving? And we said, well, not really. And they said, well, well, the Holy Spirit told us to come and stay from until 6 o'clock. And we said, well, I guess we're staying until 6. And so, you know, they prayed. And and um, then it was 6 o'clock, and they said, well, we're going. And I'm like, okay. And then I said, well, do you think we should go? And Mike's like, yeah. So we start walking down the the sidewalk, and then here come Carolyn and Tway that I didn't know, holding rosaries. And I said, oh, are you coming to pray here? And they said, yeah, the Holy Spirit told us we should come and pray. <laughs> and so they they thought they'd pray till 7. So we, we stayed with them till 7. Well, I found out the abortions, the women started coming about 1. Um, and then usually by 7, they were over. So God gave me my hours. I was supposed to be there from 1 o'clock until 7 or till it ended. And I remember one time we were there till almost midnight, and it was really? the middle of it was the middle of winter. It was November. Wow. And it was just Mike and I with this other man, Tim. And this one woman had gone in there, a young Mizzou student, and um, we had seen her boyfriend drop her off in this this clap trap of a car, you know, sure. and he never came back. And she got dropped off at two o'clock. And so finally, well, they had off-duty Columbia policemen that were security there. They opened up the door and said, we're closing. So she came out and, and just the look in her eyes like, oh, what am I going to do? Because she had no one to give her a ride home. And I said, hey, my name is Kathy. This is my husband, Mike. And if you need a ride, we'd be happy to do that, or we will stay until, you know, your ride comes. So don't worry, because it's not the best neighborhood. It's like 11 o'clock at night. And all of a sudden, well, then the, the policeman slammed the door behind her, and there she was, and all the workers came out and got in their cars, and zoom, zoom, gone. This poor girl, how, how, yeah. long, how long she must have felt. So she came walking over to me, and she goes, what do you people do? <laughs> and I said, we're just here to pray, and we just want to help you. You know, if, the, if there's anything we can do for you, we just want to help you. And she said, I told him to stop. I told him I didn't want him to do it. Oh, really? And they, they forced me. And oh, I, my goodness. And there was a surgical abortion, and she just collapsed into my arms, crying hysterically. Oh, wow. And I'm just like, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And then a girl pulled up in a car, and she said, that's my ride, I have to go. And I said, okay. I said, here's my name, my phone number, call me, I want to help you. She said, thank you. So she got in the car, and I'll never forget as she... was driving away. She put her hand up to the window like this, and I put my hand up like this. Oh, oh shit, oh, geez. And then she laughed, wow. you know? Wow, But there have been so many beautiful stories of babies saved there. Like, I remember this one girl came. She came, like, in an Uber, and um, she had gone inside, and we had given her a little model of a baby. You know, we have these little 10-week-old fetuses, and which is a beautiful Latin term for baby. And so we had given her the little baby. And uh, she came out and she said, 
I'm not going to do it. And she said, but you gave me one in a blue blanket. Do you have a pink one? Because I think I'm going to have a girl. <laughs> and so she laughed. And, you know, there's so much. There are beautiful so stories you sa- there. You, sa- you saved a baby that time. Yes, God did. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Well, this is um, St. Joseph Radio Presents coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri, uh, which we proudly proclaim as the Rome of the West. Uh, I'm your host, Ray Gerard. With me in the studio today is Kathy Fork. She is the campaign director for 40 Days for Life down in uh, Columbia, Missouri, and we're so glad to have her with us today. We're talking about we're talking about life. We're talking about respecting life. We're talking about the great gift of life that comes from God um, and the great work that, that Kathy and her colleagues are doing to help other people, I don't know, perhaps understand that, perhaps, you know, think about about um, you know this 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 gift from God that we all that we all we we all hey everybody that's you know <laughs> that's either talking right now myself or anybody's listening I mean we've all received that gift so it's a beautiful thing now Kathy um, so I don't know tell me about you uh, were you uh, you're Catholic were you, were you born Catholic were you raised Catholic yes I was I yes 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 I was. <laughs> <laughs> Cradle born Catholic through the grace of God. Uh-huh. Um, yes. Okay. I have I have um, nine siblings. Oh really? So Oh big family. Large family. Oh big family. Yes. Yeah. And where were you on the, the totem pole? I was the third. Okay. I was the third. Uh, which had interesting connotation. And uh, growing up was Faith just, you know, something you did? Was it, was it, you know, was it maybe a little, a little important or? It was. It was very important. My parents, um, of course, with so many children, of course, there wasn't a lot of money for special things, but there was, uh, there was always that beautiful gift that they would, when they would move, my dad was a diesel mechanic. And so some, you know, sometimes we would move every like four or five years um, so he could get a better job. They always look for a Catholic school in the area, and so I was blessed to have a Catholic education through eighth grade. Um, then I was not able to from freshman to junior, but I was able to graduate from St. Pius the Tenth in Kansas City. So I attended Sacred Heart School in Florissant and Assumption in O'Fallon. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. That's my parish right now, actually. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. And so you were telling us a little bit about how you got involved with 40 Days for Life. It just sounded like you just started doing, you know, the sidewalk prayer vigils, just sort of, I don't know, just, you know, ad, ad hoc kind of spur of the moment kind of thing. How did it, you know, graduate from that? Well, um, I kind of have to tell a little story um, about how this all came about. It, it's a story of a beautiful woman named Isabel and her husband, Ken. And Ken and Isabel had two children, Rusty and Jim. And then Isabel found herself pregnant again. And she knew she was pregnant. She'd been that way, you know, a couple times before. But she was having a little spotting, and so she was a little concerned, and so she thought, well, it's time to go to the doctor for that first check. So she went to the doctor, and the doctor said, Isabel, you're not really pregnant. I'm going to remove some tissue. And she said, no, I am pregnant, and she left. And so she gave birth to a child in... August of 49, and in that baby book she wrote in, in there, we named her Kathleen because it means dear to my heart. Wow. And I still have that baby book. So <laughs> the doctor had told her he was just going to remove tissue, and she had the presence of mind to say mm-hmm. no. And a child, that tissue was then a child. That was me. Mm-hmm. That was you. <laughs> okay, that's uh, wow. Oh my goodness. Yes. Well, my mother passed away sadly when I was thirty-nine, and 
I had gone back to Arizona to visit my dad after I'd been doing the pro-life work for a couple of years. And he said, oh, your mom would be so proud of you. And I said, yeah, I just wish mom was here because I just miss her so much. And he said, "Um, well, you know, Kathy, you were almost aborted. And I'm like, what? Yeah. And so then the story came out. And uh, to back it up just a little bit, my parents had the RH factor. And back in uh, 1949, the rule of thumb was, oh, if you have that, you know, a couple of kids, okay. But the third one, mom could die, baby could die, or both could die. So this doctor, in all of his wisdom, felt that um, yeah. I should die. But my mother, in all her wisdom, said no. And so I told my father that I always knew mom was brilliant because, you know, we listen to our doctors, right? Sure, sure, sure. And he said, well, Kathy... I have to tell you something else. When your mother was 16, she was sexually assaulted, became pregnant, and her parents forced her to have an abortion. And mom said that when he said those words, I'm going to remove some tissue, that's what the abortion doctor told her. And so that's what, oh my goodness, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, wow. So actually, I, I do have... I've, I named her Mary Ann, so I have a big sister, so that's actually 11. And then I did just um, find out after that, you know, my father told me that my mother did have a miscarriage. So actually there are 12 of us. And I used to say to my mother, I wish I had a big sister. And she had this pain look on her face and wouldn't really say anything. And I said, man, I wish we could have 12 kids. Wouldn't that be cool? We've only got 10. <laughs> but my mother, well, she's Irish. And the Irish keep a lot of secrets. And so, you know, there's... So we did have 10 kids, and I did have a big sister. And I know about that now, and I know that I will see that big sister, and I will see that that other child that was miscarried. How hard that must have been for your mom. Yeah. It must have been very hard for your mom. Well, after the abortion, she dropped out of church. She dropped out of school. She, you know, had the typical um, the PTSD after an abortion. It it really affected her. And until she met my father, she was like I think twenty two. She really thought that she had um, no sense of worth. Sure. But my father and she both loved each other. My father didn't have a great childhood growing up either. He had a hard time. His mom died when he was um, about five or six. And so he had a hard life, but my father was so joyous. You would never know it. Really? And so the two of them said, we want to have as many children as God will send (laughs) us. My mother is Planned Parenthood's worst nightmare. (laughs) She had 10 children, and the last one was when she was over 40. Really? And, you know, I'm sure that they're saying, oh, Down syndrome, you know. Well, that's, that's a blessing. Yeah. Down's children are a blessing. Of course, sure they are. And my mother hadn't, you know, she accepted every every child that God sent. Um, so she, you know, you, you know, so you have the RH factor, and ended up with you know that that big a family. So obviously, I know God was with them. My mother trusted so much in God. And, like, I remember when I was a a young girl, we used to go to Our Lady of Perpetual Help devotions every Tuesday. And I I just loved to go to those devotions with her. And he's, I mean, if you reach out to him, and he's so real, and if you reach out to him, yeah, he will bring you comfort. And, you know, just there's there's so many kids, like the one you were telling me about, you know, at at the abortion clinic who came out, she didn't have a ride, and finally her ride came, she must have been f- feeling very alone. Oh, you yes. Know, just, you know, you're standing there saying, hey, we want to help you, we want to care for you, we want to do what we can for you. You're wondering, did she have, like, anybody else in her life that would do that? Or It would seem perhaps not. Um, and so it's just, it's heartbreaking with all, you know, that these, mm-hmm. with these people. And I'm sure you've, you've seen that a lot. I have. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of sadness, but then, you know, there is joy when those babies are turned around. And, like, I think 
I'm not sure if you mentioned it or not, but I, I am also a sidewalk advocate for life. No, I haven't, so, haven't mentioned that yet. Yeah, and so the training that we receive um, by the end when um, – because, well, Columbia in the first three years that they were doing abortions when we first started praying there for those three years, they lost seven abortion doctors, seven of them, because really? they just couldn't keep them. And they were not doing abortions more – than they were doing abortions from that period of 2009 until October of 2018 was the last day that they actually did an abortion there. And that was a beautiful story, how a baby was saved that last day. Oh, really? I mean, is it, I mean can you tell us about that? Sure, just one sec. Okay. Because yeah. of the laws that Missouri has, we had a three-day waiting period and sometimes it'll be even more than that. But anyway, um, so this young girl had come, this teen, and she was very young. We found out later she was 14, but she had come on Monday. And then she came back that next Friday with her her grandmother and her mother. The first day she came with her grandmother. I mean, God just worked all over this. And for some reason, Planned Parenthood said that the mother had to be there before they could... Um, do the ultrasound for her to see how far along she was, which is another Missouri law that saves babies' lives. So when the mom and the grandma came back with the young teen, we were able to speak to them, you know, um, just kind of like telling that we could help, that we could help, and, you know, whatever she needed. So they, they went inside, and then a couple hours later they came out, and... I stopped him in the driveway and I said, you know, no matter what happened today, we got a hard break. Oh, very good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, we'll you, finish that story <laughs> later. <laughs> yes, that, that's, uh, this is uh, what we call a tease in the business. You'll have to stay tuned for us this story. This is St. Joseph Radio Presents coming to you live from St. Louis, Missouri. And we're talking about 40 Days for Life and all the good work that they, that they do. Uh, we're here with Kathy uh, Fork, the campaign director, so stay tuned because we'll be continuing our discussion in just another minute. Hi, this is Matt Logeman with St. Joseph Radio with a great gift idea, a St. Benedict bracelet, a trendy accessory for men, women, and children that not only looks good on everyone's wrist, but is actually armor for the spiritual battlefield. This unique bracelet is handmade in Europe and contains 10 medals within the braided cord in the adult size and seven medals in the children's size. On the front of each beautiful medal is St. Benedict holding a cross in his right hand, the object of his devotion. On the back of each medal is a cross. Surrounding the back of the medal and cross are the letters V. R-S-N M V S M Q L I V B in Latin reference which translates Be gone, Satan. Never tempt me with your vanities. What you offer me is evil. Drink the poison yourself. And finally located at the top is the word Pax, which means peace. All bracelets come packaged with an informational card and the Saint Benedict blessing which your local priest can administer. This gift is for everyone you love and care about, including yourself. Available from Saint Joseph Radio. Check the website at www.saintjosephradio.net. St. Joseph Catholic Radio is proud to announce the launch of SJEN-TV, the St. Joseph Evangelization Network. SJEN-TV is a premier online Catholic broadcasting network providing quality Catholic programming 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. We have programming such as live studio interviews, St. Joe's Java speaker presentations, current Catholic issues, and the Pro-Life series. We're featuring the many talented speakers out of Orange County, California, and this Archdiocese of St. Louis, Missouri including Professor John Gresham, Father James Mason, Karen Nokemper, Rick Hollerick, Bill Federer, and many more. To review the program list, go to sjen.tv or on Roku, sjen.tv. All this programming is free, and we are welcoming sponsorship of new programs. Find out more at sjen.tv. And we are back. Uh, this is St. Joseph Radio Presents. Uh, we are live here in St. Louis, Missouri, the realm of the West, and we're talking to Kathy Fork. She is the uh, campaign director for 40 Days for Life down in Columbia, Missouri. And before uh, I interrupted her, uh, <laughs> or the music interrupted her, um, she was telling us a little story about, I guess, the on the last day or the, the, the last baby that was saved at the clinic down there. So 
please, Kathy, you can continue that story. Yes, the Planned Parenthood in Columbia, Missouri. So anyway, um, this young teen, who we found out later was just 14 years old, when they came out of out of the building after their appointment, they got in the car, and so I stopped him on one side, and then my uh, my uh, partner, Mary Hoffmar, she was over on the other side. And usually we don't do that, but it, it Holy Spirit. But anyway, the mother of the teen rolled down their window, and I said, you know, no matter what happened, we still care about you. We want to give you help. You know, there's there's help, you know. And even if, you know, she took a pill, there there's still time, you know, that baby can be saved, but whatever it is, we want to help you. And she goes, well, we didn't have an abortion. (laughs) And I'm like, you didn't? And she goes, no, we didn't, we didn't do that. And I said, oh, and something told me, don't just say, oh, congratulations, go on. Okay. So the grandmother was driving and I said, this is my card and I want you to call me. So if we can help with anything, we would love to give you a baby shower. And they're just like, Oh, well, thank you, but we're okay. We're okay. And I said, no. I said, I know that you had to pay money. You had to pay, you know, it was like around a couple hundred dollars just to even be there. And it's not refundable. We can get you that money back. Please, please call me. And Mary's in the back talking to the the little teen, and she's like, no, I didn't have an abortion. Oh, my goodness. So anyway, that was on a, a Friday. And so on Tuesday, I get a call in the afternoon, and this lady called and she said, did you mean what you said that you would help us? <laughs> and I said, absolutely. I said, how can I help you? She said, well, my granddaughter, she's, she doesn't want to have the abortion and her mom is not sure. So can we talk to you? So, <laughs> so we did. So I yeah. met her with my other friend, Bonnie Lee. And we talked and they brought out the ultrasound. And I mean, you know, ultrasounds where you see the, the baby this was like a blob. There was like a round thing. Well, we found out that they did that so they can measure how far along she was. And I believe that she was 24 weeks. Oh, really? Oh, like wow. Like 23 wow. weeks. Wow. And she had no idea she was that far along. Well, what they had done is they told her, we can't do it here. We can't do that here in Missouri, but you can go to Hope Clinic across, you know, you can go to Hope. I hate to even say their name. Yeah. You can go to this other place. Right. And so they had given her a referral, and they said, and it's going to be, I think it was $1,500. And they said, well, we don't have that much. And they said, well, you were going to pay 900 today. So if you can't get the rest of the money, we have, I think it's called a just, well, I don't even like to say that. Yeah, they have a league that will give money out. Okay. And so they said, we'll pay for the rest of it. But you have to be there. You have to be there. Well, the reason is because they were hitting the deadline in Illinois, too. Right. And so for some reason, God had them not go. And so when they called us, they missed that window. And so it was too late. They would have had to go to Colorado or something like that. So we were able to help them. And so that baby was born. And um, every once in a while, they'll drive by and they'll pull into the parking lot and come over. And I remember the last time, it's been a, it's been a couple of years, but the little girl was walking and walking. Oh, wow. And, you know, you just, you just think like, and she got out of the car and she went like that, <laughs> jumped out of the car, boom. So and it's kind of like, jumped down. Yeah. yep, here I am on your property plan, Parenthood. You didn't get me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so... Oh. Oh my goodness, that's uh, that's amazing. So she, they would still drive by sometimes. You, yeah, even, they'll drive by e- when they see me. Even years later, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And we talk every once in a while too, and you know we've helped them out with some other different things that they've needed. What a happy ending. Yes, but I wanted to. The point of this whole thing was with the sidewalk advocacy training that we take. W- God used us through this training to be able to um, intervene in the lives of two out of every three babies. So in other words, two chose life and one did not. So that those were the statistics at the end. The two-thirds of the babies were being saved because we were able to send them over to My Life Clinic or else they just said, no, we're not going to do it. And, you know, if they were going to have an abortion, they had to come back to that place. And so we were always there on the abortion day. So our stats are pretty 
pretty um that was pretty, pretty true. Those yeah. are pretty amazing. Mm-hmm. Those stats are amazing. Yeah. But we have a lot of people out there praying. And, and the only signs we had are we care, we can help. And we'd only have two of those. And then well, that, we that, had that, trained. That, that's a beautiful message. And that's, yeah, you don't, you don't need to see, you know, you don't need to see anything about abortion. You know, even just saying prayed into abortion, when someone's going in there, they're like, well, they're praying to stop me from what I want to do. Right. All you need is we care, we can help. And, and, I love the, and I love the message that you told earlier. Some person that they were driving out of the clinic, and you said, it doesn't matter, you know, mm-hmm. what may have already happened. Mm-hmm. We still want to help you. We and still want to still want to help you. We do. That's called Support After Abortion. Yeah. Yeah, there's a website for that, supportafterabortion.com. And actually, there are men. Men are being hurt so much sure. by abortion, and they're having something. And if you go to the website, supportafterabortion.com, there's something um, that they just recently started for men, and it's on Tuesdays. It's a Zoom call. You just click on it. You get into the, the room. You don't have to say your name or anything, or you can call in. Totally anonymous, and men are helping men deal with this because men are hurting from this. And where did you say this is, uh, or what might they look for to try to find this? Well, it's called supportafterabortion.com. Support of, okay. And okay. then you just look under their, like, men's resources you know, uh-huh. you'll find sure, it, sure, sure. and there's like a little code, and you know how you put that in the phone, and then it pops up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Guys the know all this stuff. Thing. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, these yeah. these guys know that. But there's so much help, like with the support after abortion. Um, my daughter Ivy, she actually works for them. Uh, she's oh, does she? the executive assistant to Lisa oh. Rowe, and so um, she does a lot with healing. And like when Roe v. Wade was overturned, she said mm. they had so many calls from women calling and saying, I thought it was legal. What have I done? And so it has really awakened a sense of horror in these women who were able to tell themselves, well, it was legal, it was legal, and now they're having to deal with it, which is is a good thing because they need healing from this. And Jesus can forgive any sin, but they need to get healing. And with support after abortion, it's, it's not religious, you, they meet you where you're at. Because most women, they don't want to talk about God after that. So they meet them where they're at. They can just call up and talk to a counselor and they refer them to people. Yeah, I would imagine so. That you, Well, okay, that you don't want to talk about God. Sure, I'd imagine so. I know I, I my mother that. turned her back on God. That's, I was just going to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, there's, there's, I guess there's a tendency to, to do that. I guess that's one of the, the problems with abortion, right, is that it'll turn people away. Mm-hmm. You know, from their creator. Well, the devil uses that. He's the accuser. Exactly. You did something wrong. You know, right? I mean, we can see it. We can see the women when they were going in there. The devil was like, you need to do this. You know, you've got to finish school. You have two kids. You need to do this. And when they come out, they're so beaten. They're so beaten because then he's telling them, you could have had some help. You should have told your parents. You know, it's... The now, devil. They're, now they're facing all of the mm-hmm. what the ifs, hurt. the what ifs, and and the you know the second guessing of themselves and feeling bad about themselves, mm-hmm. and so it's just yeah, so it's just you know uh, just more bad, bad right. on top of bad on top of bad. It's just the you know the bad that keeps on giving, right? Yes, unfortunately. Uh, um, you know, was, I uh, I happen to you know before we began this program, I, I told you that I happened to look up. This uh, this little speech that Mother Teresa had given mm-hmm. to the National Prayer Breakfast. She traveled here to the States, and she was at the National Prayer Breakfast in Washington, D.C. in 1994. And, you know, she gave a, a little talk. And one of the things she said is that, uh, I feel that the greatest destroyer of peace today is abortion because it, it is a war against the child, the direct killing of the innocent child murdered by the mother herself. And if we accept that a mother can kill her own child, how can we tell other people not to kill one another? Mm. Um, you know, and then she goes on, how do we persuade a woman not to have an abortion? As always, we must pers- persuade her with love. Mm-hmm. And that's, that's what you were doing. That's uh, that message. You know, I don't care. It doesn't matter to us as you're coming out of the clinic. We still love you. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, what you're talking about is with these, 
you know, people, men, uh, you know, the women and the turmoil, the mental angst that they go through afterwards, they don't have peace. They don't no. know peace. You know, um, and then how long does that continue for them? Well, it continues until they actually are able to confess it, like, you know, go to confession or, you know, if, if they're not Catholic, it's some other some other help, you know. Um, you know, like I said, they a lot of them don't want to talk about God, but when they start talking about it to other people, like, you know, this, this particular men's group, you know, that's on Tuesday afternoons at 11 o'clock Central with um, supportafterabortion.com, um, they just start talking, and then eventually God does does into the picture. And it's just like on the sidewalk, the um, Sidewalk Advocates for Life. Our motto is Mom, Baby, God. That's the order of how you address these these women. You know, most people want to go in there and like, God, the baby. Oh, yeah, Mom, you're at the bottom. It's got to be the reverse. You know, it's just like in, in the airplane when they say, put your mask on first for the oxygen before you put it on your child. Right. We have to get the mother in a safe place. We need to find out what she needs. We just, we have to get her her trust. We have to show her our compassion. And then when she's comfortable with us, and then we say, okay, what's going on? And, you know, what can we do to help you with this? Like, I remember this one mother said, I have four children I cannot even imagine the laundry going. I have to go to a laundromat. And this one sidewalk advocate said, do you have hookups for a washer and dryer in your home or apartment, whatever it was? And she goes, yeah. <laughs> what if we bought you a washer and dryer? Beautiful. Would you keep this baby? Yeah. <laughs> and so they got her a washer and a dryer, and there's wow. a baby. Wow. You know, sometimes such the simplest thing. But Planned Parenthood is, yeah, that baby's well, disposable. Yeah, Give yeah, us your money. Yeah. Um, you know, it's, but it, it just strikes me that, you know, what you're dealing with, what you're talking about is just love. This is what, this is what, you know, this is what I'm hearing today from what you're saying is it starts with just love. You put the mother first. Well, yeah, because that's the person you're talking to. That's, mm -hmm. you, you're having an interchange with another person. And that person that's in front of you, we love you. And that message, that human, uh, I mean, how can you not be doing God's will with that? Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, so it just it just seems so it just seems so beautiful, and it just seems so so natural. And why, you know, why is that hard to figure? Why is that so hard to figure out that that's that's how we should approach people? Um, but uh, and, and I guess they got to feel, I don't know, so. Um, you know, I think it'd be a two-way thing, right? I mean, you're gonna you're gonna make that person feel better. There's somebody that cares. I don't even I don't know this person, but somebody cares. And then it's got to be making you feel better to give the love. Yes, it is. A, it is a good feeling to be able to help someone. Yeah. You know, that's how God made us. He made us to love. Right. Yeah. And you know, if you're if you're not, then you know. Um, you're miserable. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If you can't love, you're miserable. If you're, you know, closed-minded and tight-fisted, you know, with your money and everything, you're miserable. <laughs> but I got to imagine too. So God's third on the, in this on this totem pole, right? But I got to imagine that at some point, if people are going to heal, they're going to need they're mm -hmm. going to need to get to that third rung. They will get there. They need to get to there because. That's the source and home of, mm -hmm. of all real, true love. And if they can feel that, because he still loves, mm -hmm. still loves people afterwards, no matter what. He always does. Yes, and he desires we all be saved. And he desires we all be saved, right? Um, so, uh, yeah. So do you, um, you know, have, I mean, so you've dealt with people after as well. I mean, you've told us a little bit about, mm -hmm. yeah. And that's got to be. You know, rewarding as well. Yes. So tell me, uh, you know, we we're actually going to, uh, oh, I suppose I ought, I ought to just uh, do this right now, but um, 
I'm going to just remind everybody that you are listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents. Uh, we are coming to you from St. Louis, Missouri, the Rome of the West. Uh, this program is is uh, being aired live, and so um, if we if we mess up, it's because <laughs> we are alive and haven't <laughs> had a chance to fix anything. Um, but we're talking with Kathy Fork. She is the uh, uh, campaign director for 40 Days for Life down in Columbia, Missouri, and we're so glad that uh, she's with us today. Kathy, tell me a little bit about I don't know, I don't know some of the things 40 Days for Life is uh, is involved with these days. What are some of the things you're working on? Hmm. Well, I know there, uh, Sean Carney is going to be in Washington for the anniversary of the overturning of Roe v. Wade. And Sean is? He is the, he is the CEO and president of 40 Days for Life, one okay. of the founders of okay. 40 Days for Life. As a matter of fact, we just had him speaking at our Midwest March for Life on April 26th last month. So that was in Jefferson City? Yes, that yeah. was in Jefferson City. Right. And then we also had Lauren Muzika, who is the CEO and president of Sidewalk Advocates for Life. So she was one of the, the speakers, too. And, and, of course, we were blessed to have Bishop Shaw McKnight to give the opening remarks and the, the prayer. And um, we just got the, the newspaper, the front page, and there was Bishop Rice, and he was carrying the cross that we— we used that used to be Father Norman Westland's. It was his cross, and so we. That has been a tradition that we lead the lead the the Midwest March for Life with that cross. With the cross. Yes, yes. and then the priests they take turns carrying it, and then it's followed by the the banner Midwest March for Life and the Pro Life School of the Year, who was Saint Monica's in Creve Coeur. They uh, received that honor this year, so then they carried. They carried the banner. And then behind that, we had the Helias drum line. Oh, they were phenomenal. Oh, yeah? Oh, they were wonderful. And we had so many schools that came from all over the state. You know, St. Louis, um, Cape Girardeau, you know, all the dioceses were represented. You know, Kansas City, Springfield, Jeff City, and, of course, you know, St. Louis. So it was a wonderful, wonderful day. And... The, our next one is planned for May 1st, 2024, and uh, Bishop Rice will be giving the opening remarks there it's in on- Jefferson City. It's at the Capitol. It's, it's, it's an ongoing effort, isn't it? I mean, yes. Yeah, Roe versus Wade was overturned, and right now here in Missouri, uh, it's, it's not legal. But, of course, there are efforts to try to change that sort of thing. So, Oh, you know, yeah. they are, they are, there is an initiative right now to be on the ballot to make abortion part of our constitution. And so, you know, we're just encouraging people, if you if somebody asks you to sign something, don't sign it <laughs> because it's going to be misleading. Basically, it, it's it's going to be about um, yeah, having often, abortion often, up, often, until, yeah. up until the moment of, of birth, which would be those painful late-term abortions. abortions yeah. And then there's also something about um, taking away parental rights you know that parents wouldn't sure. be informed. Sure. So yeah, it's it's not a good thing. No, yeah. we're we're doing very well here in Missouri. We're the first abortion facility free state, and uh, praise be to God for that. And please, Holy Spirit, guide us and let us continue to be the first abortion facility state, abortion facility free state. You know, you were talking earlier about um, this uh, this woman that you saved from having an abortion, and she was about, what would you say, about 23 weeks along? Yes, the, the teen. Yeah, yes, God did yeah. that. Mm-hmm. So uh, I've got two daughters and our older daughter. That was about, that was just about her age when she was born. Oh, wow. Yeah, she was born about two and a half months early. Yeah. And that's exactly, you know, where she was at that point. Ah, uh, that little girl was so pregnant. Oh, my goodness. We just couldn't believe it. You know, when we saw her walking in there, we're like, oh. Yeah. 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 Um, so um, you've been at this for how many years now? Started in 2009, like the first part of 2009. And then um, somehow one of my... Um, prayer partners found out about 40 days for life. And so we checked into it and they said, well, if you'll lead it, we'll come. (laughs) And so I'm like, 
oh, yeah, what else do I have to do? You know, okay. And I, I remember uh, there was about a team of six of us, and we covered all 40 days, and we were there from 7 in the morning until 7 o'clock at night. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. There was a team of six of you? Yes. And you covered 40 days? Mm-hmm. From what time? Seven in the morning till seven at night. Twelve hours a day, mm-hmm. forty days, six of you. Mm-hmm. Wow. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we had um, we um, we had a, a a lady who worked uh, throwing out newspapers early in the morning, so she'd be there from like seven to ten, and she would do it every every week because she just lived like two blocks away. So praise be to God for her. And then um, I was able to do 10 until 7 at night, Monday through Friday. And then the weekends, the other people kind of split that up. And then sometimes, you know, people, we tried to have at least two people there. And then I, my husband and I started going to churches and asking for people to come pray. And so then we started getting people. But basically, there were, there were six of us doing it. And I was so blessed because my little granddaughter, Peyton Kathleen, um, she was... Um, she was 18 months old, and her mom was going to nursing school, and so they were staying with us. And so I brought her with a lot of the times <laughs> there, and she was so cute in her little stroller. It was in September, and she'd give the little wave to the people. Ah, oh, my and goodness. She's sucking her thumb, oh and there, you know, there's <laughs> these people going in there, and it's like, I know she saved babies. Yeah, wow. And she was so that's, sweet. That, that's a hard thing to look at and not yeah. have it affect you, I would imagine, sure. Yeah. So, but uh, God is good. He gives you, you know, if he if he wants you to do something, he'll he'll equip you. And so we know that this truly was of God the way that it has progressed, you know, through the years. It truly was God's plan for us to to do this in Missouri. Because then you got you started getting more people. Yes, and and you know, in meditating on it, I I realized that God was not asking me to stand and pray in front of his tabernacle at St. Andrews, he was asking me to stand and pray in front of Columbia Planned Parenthood where his babies were being lost. And through his grace, to use my team to save babies. Yeah, because I think you were telling me earlier that you were at one point you thought maybe he wanted you to get involved in promoting an, an effort with Eucharistic Adoration yes. mm-hmm. and getting more people to pray in front of the Because that's what I wanted. I wanted to hang out at church all day. <laughs> yeah. Instead, you, you, you said go out in the cold. Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. <laughs> and the heat and the snow and the rain and the thunderstorms. <laughs> I would imagine, yeah. I don't know how many hours you must have. You, <laughs> by now, you've spent outside, you know, clinic. Yes, quite a few. <laughs> <laughs> I would imagine if you counted them up, there would, would be quite a few. But we don't have time to do that. Because we're too busy doing God's work. <laughs> yes. No. Well, yeah. Yeah. Um, well, uh, this has uh, this has been this has been a real pleasure. Um, Thank you, Ray. Oh well, you, you've you know told us uh, you know some some beautiful stories. Uh, I want to really thank you you know for coming here and sharing this with us because it is all about uh, the joy of life, the joy that that God brings into this world with with every life that. Uh, that he gives. And uh, so this is uh, this has been St. Joseph Radio Presents. We've been talking with Kathy Fork. She's uh, the uh, campaign director for 40 Days for Life down in Columbia, Missouri. And she's been telling us about oh, some of the, the lives that she has actually saved. No, and, God did it all. And God did it all. I, I keep, you keep correcting me, and you are so correct in correcting me. So thank you for that. Um, so we hope you join us again uh, next week for another talk, and we're glad that you uh, glad that you were here with us today. So thank you, and God bless. Thank. You. 
You've been listening to St. Joseph Radio Presents from the Rome of the West, St. Louis, Missouri. If you would like to join us in our evangelization efforts, you can order a copy of today's broadcast or any of our past programs by visiting us on our website, stjosephradio.net. That's S-A-I-N-T, josephradio.net. Or call us, 636-447-6000. It's all at your fingertips to help us evangelize the world, bringing the good news of Christ to everyone you meet and change one soul at a time. Thank you for your prayers and support. Until next time, may God bless you and your family. This has been a presentation of St. Joseph Radio Presents. Thank you.